Good morning, I'm Apostle Benny H. Walls Jr. I welcome you to Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry. We're located in Waldorf, Maryland. I might have heard one of our ministers say that. Hey, Google it. <laughs> Waldorf, Maryland, 2725 Old Washington Road in Waldorf, Maryland. Zip code is 20601. 20601. Um, the last time I was in the pulpit, May 28th, I was speaking on the God kind of believing. The God kind of believing. Well, today we're going to go into part two of the God kind of believing. I hope that you've been enjoying the uh, uh, gifts that have been presented to you through the other ministers, through my wife, Prophet Janet, through uh, my daughter, Elder Markeisha, through... Uh, Deacon Kadena and through uh, uh, Minister Zabril, uh, they all came with the word, uh, and all the word the words were on time. They were lined up. They were cohesive. Uh, they were full of substance, full of substance. I would hope that uh, any of you out there who are desiring to be a deliverance minister of God who call, has called you to be uh, in the office of a prophet and he's delivered you from something to where you have a testimony and a story, make your way down here. We are, we are, we are uh, 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 connected to the, a school of prophecy and we are becoming a prophetic school. And we thank you, God, for that. Um, and it's not, we, haven't, we didn't do it on purpose. It's just something that God had in mind for us. Well, last uh, in May, on May 28th, and this is 2022, I don't usually put dates on stuff, but I'm going to date this one. May 28th, 2022. Today is June 10th, uh, 2022. In May 28th, we talked about the God kind of faith. We started in Psalms 36, I mean 33, 6, and we talked about how the, the Lord uh, had made all the heavens and everything, and he did it with the breath of his mouth. We went to Psalms 33, uh, verse 9 also, and it said he spoken and it was done, and it held fast. And I said, those things that God did then, they're still in place now. Until now, they're still going on. All right, so we need to understand that. Uh, but then we had a thought, faith can, faith can and will grow. We use 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, we are bound to thank God always for you. This is... Paul, Paul talking to the Thess Thessalonians, and he said, we're bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith, your faith grows exceedingly. So we see right there that faith can grow. And, and he says, your, great, your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abound towards each other. And that's when you know God's working. When everybody in your circle is loving each other. I'm talking about the God kind of love. Uh, when, when, when that agape love is flowing from person to person. Then we talked about the faith attitude adjuster in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, which we're going to go in there a little bit today, but chap chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, and it says, Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, this Paul said, I believed, and therefore I spoke. And then it says, We also believe, and therefore speak and that is what's happening jesus believed and he spoke all these people of god we saw them believe and and therefore they spoke well now we believe and we speak god is teaching us how to believe and how to speak and that is how you operate in faith the very next uh scriptures we went to was roman chapter 10 8 through 10 and we talked about the two components of faith the two components, more than two, but the two components that we need to flow in is, is, is believing and speaking. And we saw how we, our salvation, we got saved. Uh, it was a grace move through faith. It was a grace move of God giving us grace 
but we got saved through faith. How? Because we believed and therefore we spoke. Amen? Everybody who came into the, the kingdom of God believed what they heard, and therefore they spoke. You have to speak. It says uh, uh, the word is near you, it is in your mouth, and it's in your heart. In your mouth and what? In your heart. With the mouth we confess, with the heart we believe. Amen? So these are the things, and this is how you even preach. It says that is the word of faith which we preach. And that's what's happening right now. I'm ministering the word of faith. And we're going to start for the for verse, for part two. I'm going to start at Romans 8, 1. Very first thing that's addressed is condemnation. And we, even, we, we, we dealt with this in Bible study. But the very first thing that is addressed is condemnation. Because the devil likes to accuse us and get us to a place that we can condemn ourselves. <laughs> He's not even the one who condemn us. We condemn ourselves. You hear that? He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in that anointing that was on the, the, the life of Jesus Christ who do not walk according to the flesh. Now see, a lot of us are... are spiritual beings now who have been, been waking up spiritually but we still walk in the flesh we don't have to walk in the flesh ever people think that we can't stay in the spirit in the spirit 24 7 i don't have to stay in the spirit 24 7 i am a spirit 24 7 i'm a spirit 24 7 i don't I, i'm not coming out of myself so I'm in that living spirit that God brought back to life 24-7. Now, I need to do the ways of the spirit 24-7. And we think we can't do it because life's too hard. We think we can't do it because we convince us. And let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Say your hand being chewed off by a banshee. I know I've gone crazy with that one. All right, you, you're, you're, you're out in the wild, and this thing that caught you, you've been running, and you're tired, and that thing starts chewing on your hand. And it's hurting. Now, this is what a natural person would do. Oh, my God, he's chewing my hand. I'll never get away from him. He's going to kill me. Oh, he's chewing. And you're feeling the pain. But you're a commentator. You got the spirit of the commentator. You want to talk about it. Your situation, you want to consider it and talk about it. You keep talking about it. Ah, he's chewing me. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, hey, I, I. Now, in the spirit, this is what you're going to say. I know he's chewing my hand. How am I going to get away from here? This going to be here. I'm not going to let him chew the rest of me. I'm going to kill him. Let me use my other hand. Let me find something. Let me hold on to something. Don't think about that. It's happening anyway. What you going to do about it? You just sitting there talking about it, commentating. No. You're somewhere else. And that's the way we have to operate in the word of God. Just We can't talk about what we're going through. We can't look at what we're going through considering what we're going through in our condition and think we're going to move on. He said that about Abraham. He did not consider his situation. Amen. So see, our thing is stop considering your situation. But see, when that heat get on you, all you can do is talk about your situation. And that's what the devil just sitting there listening to you. You're condemning yourself. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes, I'm going through it. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm being slaughtered all the day long, but I'm not going to sit there and talk about it. I'm going to speak in faith of what's happening in the spirit realm. Not my natural. Daniel in the lion's den. Not going to sit there and commentate on the lion's den. He's going to say, ah, the God, my God's going to show up. My God is going to show up. I'm going to get delivered. The three Hebrew boys. I don't know if he's going to deliver me, but I know he can. 
I know he can. We're not going to sit here and worry about that fire. Oh, my God. He turning it up seven times hotter. I, oh, oh, Jesus. And all of that. That's what the flesh does. It starts to consider your situation. I can't stand it. Right now, in my life, where I am right now, I can't stand talking about my situation. I hate it. I hate it. And it feels like the devil's just pulling me and baiting me to talk about the situation. I don't want to talk about my situation. I want to operate out the situation. I want to believe my way out the situation. I don't want to talk about it. I know what it looks like. I don't want to talk about it. So don't consider your situation. Release yourself from your situation through faith. Is it going to make that thing stop chilling on your hand? I don't know. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Amen. All right, now look, I'm not going to go through the, well, let's look at, let's look at, let's look at verse six. No, let's look at verse five. Verse five says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds. Now, did it say God does this? Did it say this is something that somebody else do? It say you do it. You set their minds on the things of the flesh. You see that? Every morning when you get up, you should set your mind, set your day, set your spirit on what you're going to do. I'm going to operate in the spirit today. God's going to deliver me today. Today is the day that I am going to receive my breakthrough. And look at that. Stop talking about your, your situation. A baby can see your situation. All right? Set your minds on the things of the flesh, those who operate in the flesh. But those who live, who live... According to the, you see that, is, is that your spirit? No. The Holy Spirit. We set our minds on the things of the what? Holy Spirit, of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded, verse 6, is death. And that, that's all it brings to you. You want to sit around and, 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 and prophesy your own death? <laughs> uh, he says, no. But to the spiritually minded, it's life and peace. Now, why that thing torn on my hand? Why I'm in the fire? Why I'm in the lion's den? Why I'm like Joseph locked up in jail? Why I'm in these situations? Why I'm like Jesus hanging on the cross? Why I'm like, we don't understand. We all got to go through. All right? Why I'm like Job being everything's happening and no reason. And guess what? It ain't nobody's fault. This is the way God designed stuff. God designed it that we can get out of it. The devil designed it that that thing will kill you. God designed it that even though you go through it, you would live. God said, I, I gave you the spirit so that you can overcome that. How? By the words of your testimony, by the blood of the lamb, it was shed at the cross. You need to understand he did something for you right there. He did something for you. Now I need you to talk about your testimony. Stop talking about your, consider, considering your situation. Them Hebrew boys, how they know God can deliver them? Because evidently he done did it somewhere in their life before. It might not be documented, but to them it's documented. I don't know if he's coming, but we know he can. Amen? And so that's where your mind needs to be. I don't know how God going to do it. I don't know how he going to get me out of that basement, but he going to get me out of there. Now, I can sit around and talk about it in my head how I'm, I'm in the basement. Or I can go ahead and live my life out the basement while I'm in the basement. You understand? I don't need to talk about the basement. Yeah. I don't need to keep reminding myself of it, bringing my own spirit down. I don't need to keep sowing these negative seeds. I don't need to keep on holding on to seeds that don't remain. I need to hold on to that seed that remains. God say, I can overcome this. God say, he made me more than a conqueror. God say, he, what did he say about it? You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you. I fight right now. I don't want to be in my natural mind. Jesus. <laughs> Verse 7, because the carnal mind is the enemy. It's enmity against God. Well, you can't be against God and, and receive God's word. So if he's against God, he's against the words of God. He's against the spirit of God. He's against everything that God stands for. Do you want to join him? And start talking his language. 
For it is, look, that carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. That means that thing will always be talking. So that's what I decided. Since it's going to be talking, so am I. Since it's going to always be talking, I'm going to always be talking. I'm not giving in to that kind of mind. I'm going to keep on talking the spiritual things that God has given me. Because what he tell me, he said the weapons of my warfare, what? They're not carnal, but they mighty through him, not me. So I need to speak them. So then, verse 8, so then those who are in the flesh cannot do what? You can't please God because when you're sitting there considering your situation, you're operating in little faith, weak faith. But when, you, when, you, when you're operating in great faith, you're giving glory to God. Amen. We, 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 we know that from faith school. We know that from faith school. See? <laughs> and then he tells us, verse 9, but you are not in the flesh. Hello? So if you believe the word of God, you ain't even in the flesh. So stop operating like you as if you are. Because your body and everything around you telling you, you are in the flesh. <laughs> what did God say? You're not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. So if you're in the flesh, maybe you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you. That's what he just said. He said, I ain't say that. Don't y'all get mad at me out there. You better read that Bible. Read that word. The way to prove to yourself that you're saved and the Holy Spirit lives in you is don't talk about your, or consider your situation. <laughs> Man, that's yo, that's on you. That ain't on nobody else. That's on you. That's for you when you're by yourself and your mind starts turning, know that that carnal mind is doing exactly what it's designed to do. Now, you need to activate the spirit mind. You understand what I'm saying? And fight against it. It ain't, it's not going to happen automatically. You have to activate it. You have to set the spirit mind and overcome that thing. I'm talking about the God kind of believe in. That's what we're talking about here. Whew, boy, oh boy. Here we go. Let me see. Um, I'm going to jump right to the heart of it. Verse, verse, and look, and you say, you're like, well, I can't see myself out the basement. You better see yourself out of it. This is why it takes long sometimes for us to manifest stuff. Let's go to verse 24. Romans 8, verse 24. Your Bible don't have a 24 in it? Y'all better look and see what kind of book you got. And <laughs> make sure that thing got 24. All right, your 24 says, for we, that's talking about all of us, right? Yeah. We're saved in this hope. You see that? God say a whole lot of hope got you saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You see that? Because he's a what? Invisible God. So what we do, a lot of it's invisible. Start thinking about that. Huh? He says, you saved in his hope, but hope that is seen is not what? It ain't hope. It ain't hope. So the stuff that you see, that ain't hope. That ain't hope. This stuff, this stuff right here, this is carnal. What I'm hoping for, I don't need. Nobody can see it. I can see it in the spirit. God can see it in the spirit. You should be able to see it in the spirit. That's why we try to focus in to see what it is we're believing for. Right now, we believe for a home. Everybody like, where's well, a house or apartment? It's a home. <laughs> is it a penthouse? Is it a boathouse? Is it a house on a plane? It's a home. God, to, you believe for your home. All right? Y'all yeah, know Luther Vandross. The house ain't no home now. <laughs> for hope what? that is not seen. I mean, hope that is seen is not hope. For what does one still hope for what he sees? Amen? So look. I don't hope to be in the basement. Let's see the basement. God said, I need you operating in the invisible. When God takes this flesh off of us, however we leave this life, you know we're going to be invisible. God's teaching us how to operate in the invisible. He's 
the invisible God. We his invisible body. Amen. Get off your flesh. Your flesh is the your enemy. You need to already know that. This carnal mind that, 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 that keeps talking to me and making me try to talk and be a commentator and say all the stuff I see. Don't do that. That's what these social media, you look at it and you see stuff. And guess what it say? Comment down below. Be a commentator. Oh, look, somebody got killed. Somebody killed somebody. What you think? Comment. This world is designed to make us comment. I want you to be a commentary, commentator, comment. Hey, your thoughts about everything. God says, take no thought. We heard that in, in prophet school. That that's one of the highest things for us for, as a prophet is for us. Don't take that thought. And I, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, so because the devil, he's shooting these darts at me. What are those darts? They're thoughts. Right? So I'm going to use the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation, and I'm going to fight them thoughts, and I'm going to send my own thoughts, which are the word of God. I got to save myself because myself is drowning me in what I see, in my thoughts. I got to save myself. God has saved me. It's my turn. I'm a deliverer. I'm going to deliver myself first. <laughs> Y'all hear this thing? This carnal mind is not going to bow down to God. It can't bow down to God. It don't even have knees to bow. The devil has programmed it and it's on automatic pilot. So that how does it stay living then? Because you keep seeing and hearing stuff. It ain't talking to you about stuff that happened 50 years ago. Unless you sit there, you got to go through the file and meditate on it to pull it up. I'm trying to tell you. Jesus said, uh-uh, if I forget your sin, if I can forget all your previous life and I make you new, you do it too. Forget that. Stop thinking and dwelling on that. But mama, mama, she did this to me when I, so what? Daddy, do, do, do y'all don't know, but y'all don't understand what happened to me. It don't matter. What's happening now? What you believing for now? Hey, were you saved then? Are you saved now? This the God kind of believing. Are y'all riding with me? Man. Woo! I'm trying to tell you. See, like I said in the beginning, if y'all been enjoying what the minister's been bringing, I can't stay there. God to push me. <laughs> God right there. Look, look, they right there. We going. I'm like, come on, because guess what? That means y'all going. We going. Oh, what I'm talking about. My daddy, you know what my father used to always say? You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, man. Come on now. Keep hearing. Don't stop hearing. You know how you stop hearing? You start seeing. Don't see. These are your spiritual eyes now. Jesus said, those who have spiritual eyes, let them believe what I just said. Y'all understand that? For those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Same thing. Those who have spiritual eyes, let them believe what I just said. Oh, we locked. All right, Acts chapter 16. 
I'm gonna read this off my paper because I got it in the Amplified. But I'm gonna turn it anyway just because I want to see it. Acts 16. Yeah, those who heard the paper, it's on. It's verse 31. Woo! Acts 16, verse 31. I'm going to read it in the Amplified off the paper. It says, And they answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and entrust yourself to him, and you will be saved, and you and your household, if they also believe. Now, Y'all know, I like to close with what, Romans chapter 10, verse 9? I'm going to start closing right here. Because no, no longer is it just about you, it's about you and your household. Hello? You need to start getting your household saved too. Because see, that devil didn't spread it out. That devil ain't just t attacking you. He attacking mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, employer, employee, everybody. Well, we gonna save everybody. <laughs> we gonna reach out and touch them, and then you, once you get saved, gonna reach out and touch them. Yeah, because we're not going to be in the flesh. Let me read it in uh, New King James. It says, "So they said." Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Amen? So that's where we are now. So I, I, I had to write that down because I, I need to keep that so when I go to close, I don't do what my, rec, my, my mind is telling me to just go to Romans 10.9 because now that's become the ritual. You see, all rituals ain't bad. We think we hear the word ritual. Ooh. We think that's the same way. See, the devil, the folks hijacked the rainbow. They, they, they hijacked the, the Bible. They hijacked words. It's up to you to let them go. They're not taking my Bible from me. They're not taking the word of God from me. The rainbow means exactly what God said, that he's not going to destroy this earth with water again, with a flood. That's all the rainbow mean. All these other meanings people try to give to the rainbow that so that we don't identify with the rainbow, so that we don't identify with something God made, that's all the devil do. That's all he does, man. I know what the rainbow mean, and it don't mean no lilies of the valley running around. It don't mean no tiptoeing through no tulips either. Come on now. Where else are we going? 2 Corinthians is where we're going. We're going to walking in our ministry. Everybody say that. Walking in our ministry. Amen. We're going to walk in our ministry. Walk in our ministry. I'm trying to see if I need to make a detour before I hit that. No, I'll go to the, I got, I got something else we got to do, but I'm going here first. 2 Corinthians, I said. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4. I got 1 through 12 on the paper. We shall see. Verse 1 says, Since we have this ministry, hello? What ministry do you have? See, we we here as disciples of Yeshua deliverance. <laughs> ministry <laughs> we know the ministry we have we have the ministry I don't know if any of y'all remember Rhoda Ruder cleaning up the clogs moving the boo boo the clogged up pipes that the fresh water needs to run through in order to provide a service then Rhoda Ruder had to come in and clean it up and move all the doo doo that's what we do we need to understand we good at it, though. Yeah. This is what we do. None of these buildings around here that look all lavish and all this on the outside could operate without them pipes being clear. Hello? 
We clear the pipes. God has made us pipe clearers. This is what we do. People all stuffed up and all stocked up, and some of them stand in the pulpit. But they need their pipes cleared. They need to be clean so that the, that, that, that fresh water can flow. And they know it. You know who you are and you know who I'm talking to. God has anointed us to help you. In the body and out. Whether you're saved or unsaved, we can help you. I don't care what you are. People think because folks are a certain way, they can't come to the ministry. All y'all can come down here. I don't care what you believe. We can help you. I say I'm selling wolf tickets. Test us. Test us. Because all we're going to do is bring you over here. We're going to step aside and let God do what he got to do to you. Taste and see. <laughs> Woo! But the truth will be spoken. And a lot of folks can't take that. They don't like that. We don't have nothing to do with that. Let me tell you what happened to us. We was all clogged up. And the truth cleared us out. And guess what? The truth is clearing us out. So we have to continually do it. We have to keep our pipes clean. You know why? Because as soon as I stop talking here and go sit at my desk, there's stuff on the computer to clog me up. There's stuff on the phone now. They made it so now we can run around with that thing. We run around with this voluntary GPS. You know, uh, people talk about my privacy. You ain't got no pri privacy. You got a cell phone? You ain't got no privacy. That thing, listen to everything you're saying, recording. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Well, people go and try to do some dirt, so they take their phone, they leave their phone there, or they break their phone, they go get the burner joint. You think they can't track the burner? Oh, well, I ain't going to do that. I'm just going to use the landline. You think they can't track the landline? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use a sack phone like they do in the Army. We're going to use the sack You think they can't track the sack phone? Ain't no privacy. You need to already know you don't have privacy. So, so get off of that one. We're going to help you. I don't care who you are, what you're dealing with. If we can't help you, we know somebody who can. And we're not going to sit here and toil with you and you really don't want help. Let me give you a couple, a couple of sessions. And then you will be dismissed. You know why? It's only so much oil. Five virgins got it. The other five didn't. But they all were sitting there like they wanted to do the thing. We all want to go in. We all, but you're not willing to do what it takes to get in. So they got dismissed. That's how we dismiss you. We're going to say, get up out of here. We're just going to keep giving you stuff to do. Until you say, I ain't coming no more. Why? I ain't doing that. I'm not doing it. That's on you. But we have our arms open ready to receive, willing to work with you and put the time in, willing to sacrifice our time for you. You know why? Somebody did it for us. And he hung on a cross. He started it, and then he left us here to finish it. He said, my part, it is finished. <laughs> now I'm going to be invisible again, and I will help you Cause does say he go and he works with us, working with us. Amen. Are we, are we ready? Are, are we there yet? Therefore, since we have this ministry, I think that's as far as we got. 
as we have received what? Mercy. Who in here haven't received a mercy yet? Who in here has God done everything to you that you deserve? No one. That we have mercy, we do not do what? Lose heart. Why does it say that? See, because if you receive this ministry, the devil's already trying to make you lose heart. He's already on top of you trying to hurt you and make you lose heart. He wants you to fix your mouth and start talking about your condition. He wants you to, look, me sitting around talking about my condition made me lose heart. It, 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 it bring a spirit of depression on you. And God taking too long. Now I'm judging him. Pretty soon I won't even respect him. And then I'll get turned over to a reprobate mind. The devil got an end game. You think that you just rejected one little thing, but you don't know where it ends up. He got an end game. The devil's job is to wait you out. Don't you know God dropping blessings on you? you? Do you know it's spiritual warfare going on right now trying to get your blessings to you? Because God heard you when you first prayed it. Can you wait? God started the waiting game a long time ago. And then Jesus came and he, he <laughs> this is what Jesus said. I'll be back. <laughs> when Jesus I'll be back so the waiting game starts salvation belongs to those who endure until the end until what until what he called the end or until when you end it I'll be back. Hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger, don't you sue me. Because Jesus said it before you. Y'all ready? But we have renounced the hidden things. Now listen to this now. I'm going to change this word hidden to invisible. Things we can't see, right? We have renounced the invisible things of shame. See, that's the spirit. That's why I want you to understand. These hidden things, these are spirits. Shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Hello? Look, God has ordained y'all ministers in order to minister the word. Just like what I'm doing right now. You have the choice to either do it the way God said or handle it deceitfully. Oh, don't think he's not listening to every word that come out of your mouth. Ha, huh, here we go. Instead of doing it uh, deceitfully, we're going to do it by manifestation of the truth. What's that mean? Let me tell you. Let me give you a little, little, little something, something on this. It says by the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of truth. It says manifestation. Well, how does the Holy Spirit manifest himself through the spiritual gifts? Every time y'all see manifestation, think about the Holy Spirit's spiritual gifts. When God say he came back in power, he came back operating with the spiritual gifts. Hello? The spiritual gifts. You ask people, what's your spiritual gift? I don't know. He don't want you to know. We're going to expose your spiritual gifts. Because when we expose your spiritual gifts, we're exposing the Holy Spirit power in you. You need to know what your spiritual gift is. That's why some of us can't operate right now. Because we don't know what our spiritual gift is. And that's where our power is. That's the only power. Hey, look. What other power you got? You got some wicked power where you can do other stuff? When people see you with a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom, discerning spirits and miracles and faith, and all, it's spiritual gifts. This is 
how he manifests himself, the invisible God. Because the devil manifests himself with this shame. See that right there, that invisible, that hidden thing. Shame. Somebody point to shame. So go ahead, point to it. Because we can't see it. But you feel that thing when it's on you, don't you? That spirit of heaviness and that de de uh, depression. You can feel them things on you. You better know you can feel those spiritual gifts too. See, we got used to that stuff because we was operating in the flesh. When you come over and operate in the spirit, you're going to start feeling those spiritual gifts. Oh, we up <laughs> We're talking about the God kind of believing. The God kind of believing. Can you believe this? Mm. Here we go. But the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. God say, hey, 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 I'm going to send men to you. I'm going to send people to you. I need for you to understand what they're talking about. Because, see, they, look, their conscience is already one place. When God gets to you, your conscience goes somewhere else. So we're going to commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, if you can't see the gospel of God, if you can't see the word of God, it is only veiled to those who are perishing. Are you perishing? So see, when you tell me you don't understand the word of God, when you tell me you can't receive the word of God, you're, you're, you're actually admitting I'm going to hell because I don't have the Holy Spirit. See, people don't, they don't want to hear this. This is the truth. <laughs> this is the truth. There's not one saved person who can't understand the word of God. You want me to tell you how? And how I know, and how I can stand here and say that? You got saved, didn't you? How? How did you get saved? How do you even believe you're saved? Was the word of God? It was something you made up. Don't play with me. Here we go. Let me get back up here. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Verse 4. Whose mind, listen to this now, the, the God, little God, that devil, whose mind the devil, the little God of this age, has blinded. How are you blinded? Shame, condemnation, all these other things. Hidden things that you can't see. Yeah, unbelief. How does unbelief, spirit of unbelief get there? You know, well, y'all know, boy, that's a good. We want to tell you how the spirit of unbelief get there. Cause God told you something that you need to believe. <laughs> so that God told you something you need to believe, here come unbelief. Oh no, don't believe that. Did He really say that if you touch that thing, you're gonna die? I need, to, I need to get that doubt going and that unbelief. Here we come. Because why? Because God told me something. That's how unbelief starts. When God talks to you and tell you something. And then here come unbelief and doubt. And then when you say, oh, okay, I'm operating in unbelief and doubt. And then guess what? Then the devil starts showing you the evidence. See, you've been believing for 10 years. It ain't happened yet. See, been, he starts adding up all these facts and figures to you. And then guess what? Now you're over there. You know why? Because you are living by herd. <laughs> Faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. It's action all the time. Hearing it. Yeah. Enduring until what? The end. Amen. He says, whose mind he is blinded, who do not what? Believe. They're operating in what? There we go. Unbelief. At least the light of the gospel, because that gospel get in you, it lightens up your, the load on your life. It lightens up everything in you. When you start operating in the word of God, don't you know, do you see how much lighter you feel because you're not carrying that burden anymore? That you can jump around and say hallelujah, and you can go up and down, and you can do that crazy chicken dance, that stuff that people be doing. They call it, they call it the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It's you meditating on what God said. It make you run sometime. It make you dance sometime. It make you lay down, roll around on the floor. The thing is, though, why you run, why you dance, and why you roll on the floor? What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? 
Because if you're doing all of that and he ain't saying nothing to you, you get up and you're the same way he was when you went down there. What did he do? God don't waste motion. Mm -mm. God don't waste motion. Y'all see me in here running around and stuff. You better believe God don't say so he's talking to me. And when I get up, I tell you. I'm going to tell you what he said. I'm going to tell you what he said. I'm going I'm to know. Because he's going to have to say something to get me down there rolling around, first of all. Y'all say, look at the apostle. <laughs> boy, God dealing with that boy. Y'all will know that. Especially y'all see me running. Jesus. I bet if I start running, everybody be like, whoa. Here we go. Mm. Who do not believe, uh, at least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, or at least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, the one we can't see, should shine on them. You see that? When God image shine on you, you deliver. God image shine on you, glory is all on you. God image is shine on you, then you're getting empowered to do something. God don't just shine his image on you. When Moses came back and they seen that thing on his face, they were like, boy, <laughs> what in the world? Moses came back with a message. I've been with God. He told me to tell you something. They're like, put on the veil. Oh, my God, all of this. Because you can only you looking at me in the flesh. You should be sitting down saying, what did God say? What did God say, Moses? What did he send to us? Hurry up for that thing disappearing on your face. I want you talking while you look like that. Don't talk to me with that thing, God. I don't know if that's you, him, but right now I know that's him. Yeah, see? Uh-huh. <laughs> he said, for we do not preach ourselves. See what I'm saying? I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what thus said Benny Walls. We do not preach ourselves. But we preach what? But Christ Jesus the Lord and our, and ourselves, your bond servant for Jesus' sake. Jesus first, we second, and it's for your sake. For it is the God, for it is the God, for it is the God, capital G, who commanded, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in, your, in our hearts to give the light of the wow, 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 to give the light of the knowledge, knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God said, I expose myself to you through Jesus Christ. I've given you a way to be intimate knowledge with me. I've given you a word of knowledge, the word of knowledge in Jesus Christ. Why they, why they ain't like Jesus? All Jesus was doing was manifesting the, 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 the spiritual gifts. He was healing people. Miracles was happening. Huh? He was just operating in spiritual gifts. Laying hands on people. He was doing stuff. He was calling people through the spiritual gifts. That's how God do. He said, who he said going to draw them? This is the Holy Spirit. And usually he going to use them spiritual gifts. Huh? And see what what happens is when we start operating our spiritual gift, people are like, oh, come to our church and preach. If I come to your church, somebody get healed. I can just come there and talk to you. I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna preach. And then the manifestation of the Holy Spirit's coming. Somebody getting out that wheelchair. See, God's preparing us. He's getting us there. But we got to believe all this stuff I'm saying now for us to get there. See, God wants us to operate in his spirit with precision and being precise like Jesus was. Jesus didn't sit down and interview a person. Are you saved? Do you know me? Or you just believe that I can lay hands on you and get healed because that's all it takes. You operate in belief. Pow! Go, go ahead. Now go and sin no more. Why you say that? Go sin no more. Because he know you can go do something. He's talking to you. I'm trying to 
I'll tell you. Mm. Verse 7 says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence, <laughs> the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. And, not of us. and the reason he's saying that is because some people do got a false power. We saw, I'll tell you, all you got to do is go back to, uh, to Pharaoh and they threw them daggone sticks down on the ground. They turned to snakes. Hmm? God, like, I know that wickedness is out there. It's another spirit working in the earth. Now, you see, because when you're working in God's power, it's nothing in it that's contrary to God. There's other people who could pull off miracles and, and do these things in magic as they try to call the powers of God. God God's powers perverted is magic. Magicians learn how to deceive you. It's deception. See it right here? No, you don't. Hello? They're like, ain't nothing wrong with a magician. That boy telling me that at, at, when I was at work, I was working, and he's like, ain't nothing wrong with magician. And I tried to get it out, but I couldn't get it out. Then when I got home, God said, all I had to do was talk about deception. I was like, oh. Yeah. Because I used to have a magic kit when I was a little boy. I like magic. I like now you see it, now you don't. I still do. I like that. But I understand what that is now. So when you see some of them doing some stuff that is otherworldly, it's a really otherworldly. Some people, they ain't, they ain't operating ma magic. They doing sorcery. They straight up in that thing. They doing some stuff for real. They being empowered by the devil. It's a whole lot of magicians out there. A lot of them names begin with D. Then there's one <laughs> whose name is really close to Christ and, 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 and angels. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's a magician, and he has a place in Las Vegas. And I've watched him, and he he do stuff, man, and mess your head up. I mean, mess your head up. You look at this stuff, and you like, <laughs> hey, no way, <laughs> hey, that boy working with something. That boy working with something. I don't know if that's right. So since I know that, and since I have the, I, I, this thing where I, I like looking at magic, I don't look at it. For real. Because while I'm looking at it, they could be putting a spell on me. So I don't know. We just open ourselves up to stuff. Songs put spells on you. I was watching a rap battle the other day. Woo! I, I, I would only let the mature people in here see it. Because this girl got so deep in divination that I said, I had to sit back. And I said, I got to turn this off. <laughs> I got to turn this off. And all she was doing was spitting words. People say, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Anything that's like that, no, it's a lie. Words can, oh, words hurt, hurt you. Worse than a stick and any stone. Somebody can put a word on you and you receive that thing mess up your whole life for generations and you don't even know what happened. Just, cause, just because you, you uh, uh, made yourself available to it saying, oh, you know, God don't, God, you know, God know my heart, God, blah, 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 blah. God told you to leave this stuff alone. It's a young man on, on, on YouTube. I found him just yesterday. Now listen to him. And I'm like this. I need a youngin like this. He on fire. He on fire. He got some stuff with him. Everybody got stuff with him. I, the, boy, you find the person don't have stuff with him. You found Jesus. <laughs> he got a little stuff with him. I don't even know what he believed. I know he believed in Jesus Christ. But I heard him say something. I said, is he a Hebrew? Is what? I don't know. All I know is what he was telling men to do. He was telling people to leave them diagon, uh, uh video games alone. Stop, leave pornography and masturbation alone. 
See, I ain't like when I say that, but that's real because it's running rampant through the Christian body. He said, leave it alone because it takes away your, your, your strength and your power. I said that when I, I said, well, you know, when I was young and I was out on the street doing what I was doing, I wish I hadn't done all that because it's like I used up all myself. I used myself up in the street. When, when God, God, God gave you that for a special thing. All right. And he was talking about leave it alone. He was talking about television and these things and uh, social media, you know, uh, and he get paid through social media. If you really want to be all hooked up in social media, why don't you make yourself your own page and do some stuff that's constructive? A young and on fire for God. I love that. A man, a male. The male seed. Young and ready to separate himself from this world. Talking about, he, he, he said, he ain't doing no drugs, he ain't drinking, chasing no women, none of that. And I was like, well, when I was your age, I was doing all of that. I was doing all of that. I needed somebody to, to tell me, stop doing that. That's why I tell people that, stop. Kids don't even want to be around me because they don't like, stop it, stop, you shouldn't be doing that. they like, yeah, you had your fun and you don't want us to have ours. I'm like, I thought I was having fun. I messed myself up. The only reason I'm telling you, if it was so fun, I tell you keep doing it. If there was something positive at the end of it, but it's because of the negative ending. I'm telling you, don't do stuff, stuff, stuff. Don't go down that street. Don't do that. Here we go. All right. Uh, 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 man, I, I don't even want to go through this part right here. <clears throat> it says, we are hard, verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, yes, yet not crushed. See, God knows your condition. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. He knows you're going through hell. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? That the life of Jesus may also be manifested. Here you go, spiritual gifts again. Y'all see that? Manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Y'all hear this? That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in them gifts. I'm trying to tell you. In our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but what? Life in you. So the people who stand here, we should be at a level of death that you can get life from us. That's what he's saying. Death is working in us, the ones who minister in the word. Why? So that you can live. Because it's going to be your turn when you're going to have to do this too. Yeah, you yeah, understand what I'm saying? Jesus did it. He was our example, and that's what we're doing. So you need to be able to look at us and say, they dying to themselves. Because all, instead of just looking at us and judging us for our outward appearance and what you see, say they die. These people dying to themselves because they're not doing what I would do. If I was them, ain't no way I'd be going through that right there. If I was him, I'd be blah, blah. If I was her, I'd be blah, blah, blah. Y'all always got to, if, 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 if I was. But you ain't. And that's what I'm going to tell you. If you was me, you'd be looking at you talking about if I was her, I'd blah, blah, blah. If I was, <laughs> that's what you'd be doing. So don't tell me what you would be doing. Because I'm learning to die to myself and stay dead. Here we go. Now I'm coming off of that. Now I want to run, I want to jump to Matthew 25 real quick. This is the last one. This is the last, uh, section we're going to last book last book of the bible these are the books of the bible the wonderful books of the bible matthew chapter 25 now i was meditating on this and i heard i heard a minister talking about it in a way but then the holy spirit he always come to me he already come to me, and I thank God for that because I need him to come to me, speak to me, 
explain what you were saying to me, even though he was saying that about it. Why you got my ears perked up about it? Here we go. Matthew 25. Am I there yet? That's 26. 25, verse 14. Do I need to go through this whole thing? Anyway, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another he gave one. To each according to what? His own ability. Y'all hear that? This is why I, I, I just want y'all to take that, piece, that, that little piece right there and say, God has distributed to me his things according to my ability. How do you know what your ability is? I really don't. He do! So stop looking at other people wishing you was them. God gave to you according to what he called you to do. You should be the best you with his stuff. All right, hello? It ain't, stop trying to emulate and be other people comparing yourself. God says, hey, do not be comparing flesh things to flesh. We compare spiritual things to spiritual things. Amen? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, he gave it to them according to their ability. He says, in the mili immediately they went on the journey. Then he went on the journey, right? Immediately he went on the journey, amen. Now, I'm going to go down to, let me see. Okay, then he who received, verse 16, he who received the five went and traded with them and made another five. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. But the one who received the one, he went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So the one who had the five came and brought the other five, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five. Look, I have gained five more. Beside them, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more. Besides them, and the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few. I will make you rule over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then, he, then the one who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a, a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid the talent in the ground. Look, there, you have what is yours. The Lord answered and said to him, boy, <laughs> you wicked <laughs> You wicked and lazy servant. Mm -mm -mm. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So I'm taking that title from you. I'm going to give it to the other ones. That's what he's saying. And to everyone who has more will be given into the... In, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken. And then it says he cast the unprofitable servant into out of darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I went here because I'm, I'm, I'm putting put another, put some, something on here, Holy Spirit. You may be a one-talent person. You may see other people who got more talent than you. You may see people who could do more than you do. In verse 24, what do we see happening right here? Let me see. In verse 24, 
In verse 24, y'all see this boy giving an excuse. He considered his condition. Hello? And he, and he started formulating an excuse. There's a reason. All of it's real and all of it's true, but so what? God don't care about that. See, we think we justified by our excuse. And my reason, I ain't had time. I ain't had that. Right? <laughs> God called you wicked and lazy. It's an excuse. And then in verse 25, we see, oh, and you operating in fear. That one talent. And I, I, let's get away from the money part. Let's look at that one, this thing gave, God gave you. And you comparing it to these other people that God gave so much, you say, oh, look how they're so blessed. Now, I, bah. God gave you one. Don't have an excuse. Don't operate in fear. Take that one thing God gave you, open that joint up, because it may be worth 40 talents. If you just look at it and receive it and let him do to you what he want to do with that one talent. It may be more powerful than all of other talents. If you would just operate in it, Believe him, don't have fear, and allow God to do with you in that one talent what he want to do. Because I was looking at how I came into this world and the condition that I had and say, well, you made me like that. And I said, God, forgive me. Because God, like, look what I gave you. I gave you something. Open it up. Let me have it. Watch what I do with it. Don't look at that. See, a lot of us want to look at our life, my parents, my this, my that, why I'm the way I am. And you, we, we think that's good enough. It's excuses. God will call you wicked. He call you lazy. Why? Because you won't overcome it. God said, I've empowered you with just enough to punish that, to move it, to operate at a very high level. Why? Because I gave you the talent. I gave it to you. I gave it to you. So let's take our one thing, whatever God gave you, however many he gave you, give it back, present it to him. Right? And multiply that thing. Don't consider your situation. Don't consider other people and what they're doing. This is a personal thing between you and him. You know what I'm talking about? The God kind of believing. That has been my time. I hope you receive something. I'm going to Acts 16.31. For those of you who don't know Jesus, in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, it's on the paper, but I want to say it to you from the here. 16... Verse 31, it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you today, you heard all about him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be what? Saved. You and your household, if they shall believe. In the name of Jesus, that's my word to you. Father, we thank you for this word that went forth today. I ask right now, Father God, that you sow it deep in their hearts, that they're able to pull it up when they need it and operate in your power. And we look for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit 
through our spiritual gifts that you gave us to sustain us and to prove that you walk with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.